when you come to practice in a new place, some of the feelings may be different. Practicing at home is one thing. Practicing in a monastery is something else. Practicing in the forest is something else still. In terms of the impressions you get, some of the feelings that come up. But the committee in charge of the mind is still the same committee. So you want to make sure that wherever you go, the committee is on board with the practice. It's a galico. Doesn't matter where you are, when you are. It's still a matter of keeping watch over the mind. And we practice this by getting the mind into concentration and learning how to observe it without that observer inside. The concentration comes and goes and goes up and down, and you don't really notice why it's coming, why it's going. You don't see connections. We're here to see the connections between things that ordinarily we live in. States of becoming, there are moods. A mood comes along, we jump right in. Another one comes, we jump over there, like hopping trains. But the part of the mind that can stand outside of the hopping, that can stand outside of the trains and watch all this going on, that tends to be pretty underdeveloped, which is why we practice concentration, developing our mindfulness and alertness. So we can see the spaces in between the little states of becoming, in between the moods. And we see the parts of the mind that are commenting and adjusting and doing all the work. Our karma in the present moment. That's what we've got to learn how to watch very carefully. And to do that, you have to have really continuous mindfulness, really continuous alertness. The observer has to be there. Even although other things are arising and falling away, you want to have that observer as gapless as possible, because then it can see in the gaps of other things. But if it ends with each state of mind and then rises again with other, each state of mind, you don't see what goes on in the middle. It's an important part of the practice is that you make it timeless, that no matter what you're doing, you're still watching the mind. Make that your habit. It starts with outside things and moves on to inside things. Look what you're doing, make sure you're doing it well. When they talk about being mindful in your daily activities, it's not just trying to be alert, but also trying to be ardent, doing them well. And it's in the ardency that you begin to see connections. You do things this way, you get that result. You do it that way, you get this result. Because the connections are what make all the difference. When we gain insight, it's not so much a technical thing. It's more a sense of having a sense of values, that doing a certain thing in a certain way is really worth it. This principle extends from very blatant things down to very subtle things. That's what the whole teaching on not self is all about. The Buddha isn't saying there is no self. He's just saying it's not worth applying the label of self to a lot of things that you ordinarily do. So to see the worth of things, you have to see what they're connected to, what they lead to. And that's why you have to be able to observe connections as they happen. So as meditating here, when the mind slips off, try to notice why. And if you miss it, we'll just get back to the mind, get back to the breath, and be prepared for the next time that it's going to slip off. Or if it doesn't slip off, then you can start asking yourself, what I'm doing right now, keeping the mind right here with the breath, to what extent am I putting too much effort in? So it's making the concentration rough or coarse. How can I keep the concentration? How can I keep the mind still, but do it in a more refined way? Again, it'll take a while. You'll miss 
a lot of opportunities. But if you keep at it, you'll finally begin to see, oh, this particular activity is excessive right now, I can drop that. Or this perception is too gross right now, I can drop that. Again, it's a matter of value judgments that come from seeing the connections. And it's the steadiness of your observer that allows you to make those judgments, see those connections. So regardless of where you are and what, what the input is that's coming in from outside, you want to keep your gaze focused mainly on who's in charge, who's making the judgments here as to what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. And John Fuhrman tells of the time when he first went out into the forest alone up in Chiang Mai. He'd been with a John Mun for a while, and he was used to having a John Mun, that kind of constant gaze with him. But he went out off on his own and began to realize that his own gaze wasn't quite that constant. And of course, when you go to a new place, especially out in the forest in Thailand, there's always the possibility there might be some spirits around. There might be nice spirits, and there may be unfriendly spirits. So you've really got to be on your guard. So for the first couple of days, he was very much on his guard. He meditated late into night, slept only a little bit, and was very diligent in his walking and sleeping meditation. After a couple of days, he got a sense that, ah, there probably isn't anything around here. So he went to sleep a little bit early that night, and as he was lying down with that thought, oh, there's probably nothing around here, just as his head hit the pillow, he heard his voice in his ear saying, go, you're not wanted here. That, of course, got him up, made him realize you can't let down your guard. You've got to have that observer constantly watching. It's not just watching without passing judgment. It also has to have the sense of, well, what should you be doing right now? There's always a should in the Buddhist teachings. I mean, everything starts with the Four Noble Truths, and each of the Four Noble Truths has its should. When you learn anything in the Dharma, you ask yourself, where does this fit inside those four truths? And then you automatically know what the should is with regard to that. So you're also trying to develop good qualities of mind. Anything unskillful comes up, do your duty, i.e., figure out how to let go of it. No matter how much you may like that particular defilement, that particular form of craving, you've got to recognize this is a problem, this is something that should be dealt with, and it should be done right now. We can't count on how much more time we're going to have to practice, but you do, do know you've got the opportunity right now, especially when you go out in the wilds. You can watch your mind all day long, and for a lot of that, that's a pretty daunting proposition. We always find some other way to distract ourselves with this activity, that activity, this job, this responsibility. And of course, we've got responsibilities of the monastery, and even when you go in the wilds, you have your responsibilities. You've got to keep the place neat. Act as if there's somebody watching you. At the very least, you know that you're watching yourself. That's what matters. But that extra little oomph that comes from saying, well, there might be somebody watching me. I better behave myself. I'm on their territory, not on mine. And you're there simply to train your mind. But you will have your duties, keeping the place clean, keeping it neat, having everything organized. And keep watching the mind as you do this. Make sure that your outside habits are helping to train the mind in its inside habits. Your ability to observe yourself while you're doing your outside habits, that's going to be the same observer when you're doing your inside habits of focusing the mind, getting things settled, dealing with distractions as they come up. And get the right quality in that observer. There's goodwill, but there's also a, a little bit of skepticism. That's what keeps you on your toes.
So as John Fung used to say, he wanted this practice to be akaliko, timeless, which also means that it doesn't depend on where you are. You've got this committee in your mind watching over things. We're trying to get the good members strong and keep them watching again and again and again as continuously as possible. Another image from a John Fung this is of a teacher. It's got to make sure that all the kids in the classroom are doing their work. The teacher has goodwill for the kids, wants them to learn, but at the same time wants to be strict with them when they start playing games, passing notes, doodling, doing other things. The opportunity to go into the wilds, the opportunity to be in a monastery, it's a valuable opportunity. You don't want to waste it. Try to get as much out of each second of time, each breath, as you can. That statement, one of the reflections we have, days and nights are flying past, flying past. What am I becoming now? Are you becoming more mindful or less? More alert or less? More concentrated or less? What type of person are you becoming? Someone who's heedful or someone who's not? Keep asking yourself this question and become the kind of person who can give a good answer.